Welcome everybody, this is Apocalypse Doc, your doctor in the apocalypse. And today I have not so much a tutorial as just a way to make our stat bars um, easier and more efficient. So let's get started. First, we're going to create an enum and it's going to be called stat bar type. Okay, go ahead and open that. And we're going to have different types. For example, health, oops, food, water, and stamina. All right, so save that and close. Then we're going to go to, let's go to our, let's see, our health bar. And we're going to duplicate that and just call this stat bar UI. Okay, go ahead and open that. So instead of having a separate widget for stat, for, excuse me, for health bar, food bar, and stamina bar, we're only going to use one widget and you'll be able to expand this to include many different stats, how, however many you want to add to your character. So we'll change this, we'll rename this stat bar. Okay, I'm making that a variable, compile and save. All right, and then we're going to drag this bind event, move it down to the second pin in the sequence node on the construct. We're going to drag out the stat icon, drag out this and write set brush from texture. Okay, let's put this up here, make this look a little neater. I'm actually going to test something out as well. So let's put a branch right here for the event pre construct. There we go. And for the texture, well, so that's going to vary based on the type of stat bar we have. So remember, we just made that enum, right? So let's go ahead and make another variable here and call it stat bar type. And that's going to be based on our enum. So e stat bar type. All right, and make this instance editable, compile and save. And so let's drag this out, a getter. Then from the texture, drag this out and type select. Okay. And the stat bar type is going to be our wildcard. So depending on what type of bar it is, the icon's going to change. So let's go ahead and select those. All right, so here's the Band-Aid. So I, I really want to use that for my health. So all I have to do is select this little arrow right here. And then now for food and water, let's, let's grab the apple for food. Let's just grab a soda can for water. And for stamina, I'm not sure I have a good icon for that. I'm just going to use animal footprints for now <laughs> until I can import some other icons. Compile and save. So based on the stat bar type that's selected, the icon is going to change, okay? And right now the default is health. So you'll notice that this icon is still the band-aid. So what happens when I change this? Let's change this to water. And as you see, it changes to our can. All right. So now we want to do the same thing for the color of the bar. So let's drag out the stat bar. Remember, this is the progress bar. Type set fill color and opacity. And we want this to also change based on the stat bar type. So let's type select. All right. And let's copy our stat bar type. 
let's paste that right here as our wild card. And let's see, I don't know if I saved the colors, but we'll just have to create them again. We'll choose a red for health. Okay. And for food, a brown color, but not like gross brown. I guess that's okay. And for water, let's go for a nice blue. For stamina, let's just let's select green. Perfect. Compile and save. All right. So now that we've done all of that, we can close that out. And we are no longer going to use our old food bar and health bar. Okay. We're going to totally change that. So let's go back to our stat system and where our player bars were. And we're going to actually delete these inside of here. Okay. So let's select these and just delete them and save. And now we're going to add our new stat bar. Let's call this health. And now let's duplicate that and we'll call this food. All right. And while we're at it, let's add a water bar. And we'll add the logic for that later. All right, so for our health bar, we've selected health. For our food bar, we can go over here and select food and see how everything changes. Go to water and select water. Compile and save. So let's go into our stats component where we're adding these, the player bars to the main HUD. See, we need to redo this since we change things. So let's refresh that, refresh that, okay. And then let's go to our stat bar UI and we need to go to the function initiate health bar values because remember we duplicated this from our health bar but instead this is going to be initialize stat bar value. So F2, rename this. So this refresh health bar needs to change. And instead of refresh health bar, it's going to be refresh stat bar. And this is going to change based on the stat we are using. So we're going to go ahead and change this. See this even our event dispatcher where we're updating. We need to add another input and it's going to be called the stat type. And that's going to be our enum we created. E stat bar type. Compile and save. I'm going to do a select node. Okay. And our wild card will be the stat bar type. Okay, and since we already have calculated the health, let's plug that into health, and now we're going to need to get the logic from the stack component for the other values. Okay, so let's get current food. There we go. Perfect. Now let's get our max food. And just like this, we're going to divide them. So let's copy and paste that. and plug this into food, compile and save. Perfect. So we're going to need to do that same thing over here for the text. So drag out from current and write select. Grab a select node. Same thing from here. Type select. And then we're going to go back here and drag our stat bar type. And 
as our wild card. And so for the current health, plug that in there. Max health goes here. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for food. Copy and paste. Connect these up. Save ourselves some time. Current food. Okay. Copy and paste this. And one more time. Connect the pins. Compile and save. All right. All right, so right here, we're gonna need to plug this in to the initialized stat bar values. Compile and save. So based on the step that we select right here, it's gonna refresh the stat bar. All right, it's gonna set it up. So let's go back to our stats component and correct all of this. All right, so we need to initialize our value, so let's do that. And then since we're selecting the food bar, we want to initialize the food, and it's asking for its stats component, so plug that into self. And the same thing here. We'll just copy our function, plug this in, connect the stats component to self, and since we're initializing the health bar, we select health, compile, and save. All right, and we still have to refresh some other things. All right, so let's refresh this right here. Let's drag out update. And remember, um, let's see, I think we need to rename, oh yeah, we need to rename this dispatcher, update stat bar. There we go. Compile and save. Go back to our stats component. And we're going to call update stat bar. All right. And remember, this is our on wrap current food, so whenever the current food changes, this function is called. So let's select food for the stat type and plug in self to the stats component. Then we're going to need to do this with our health. All right. There we go. Perfect. Plug in self to stat component, select health, compile, and save. All right, and this should be good. Let's push play. And everything is working. Push P, remember we hooked that up to our debug. We're losing health. Our food is going down. Our water isn't changing. We haven't added that yet. That'll be in a future video. Perfect. So we can go ahead and we can delete this health bar and this food bar. All right, and save all because we've now made a more efficient system where all we need is one widget for the bar and however many stats we want, we just keep adding them in here, all right? And all we need to do to change our properties is select whatever we want over here. All right, I hope that's been helpful. That's just a more efficient way to make your bars and it also saves you from having to make additional widgets. Like if you had 20 stats you wanted to keep track of, you don't want to have to make 20 different widgets. Why not just use one? Thanks so much for joining me. I hope this has been helpful. Go ahead and hit that like button if you like what you see. If you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And have a good day.